Where were you? Where were you when Tulane, trailing 15 in the fourth quarter, came back to beat USC? Where were you? I'll tell you where I was. I was driving on I-65, and I was listening on the radio, and that's the kind of game that it really paid to listen to on the radio. A lot of drama. College football's great on the radio. Not quite as good as baseball, maybe, because baseball's made for radio, but it was a really good one. So let me tell you, I go down to Tulane earlier this year for the UCF game, and they got beaten pretty soundly. I picked probably the worst representation of Tulane to witness because elsewhere this season, they end up going 12-2. and two. Willie Fritz turns this thing around from 2-10 and 10 last year to 12-2. and two. All kind of history was made, all kind of record books rewritten. And I'm going to talk about Lincoln Riley and USC in just a second here too, but we talk about winners first. I thought that was going to be USC, a vast majority of this game. It was not. What a classic Cotton Bowl this was. So Tulane's down 15. And as I said, I'm driving, and I remember thinking to myself, this is bowl season. It's been really crazy so far. Self, I asked, what would have to happen for Tulane to win this game? It was very obvious. You would have to have a, a special teams and defensive implosion. And then USC's special teams imploded, and then their defense imploded. And voila, that's how you don't give away a game without the other side taking it. So I'm not going to say they gave away the game. They lost the game because Tulane came back and won. Now, the casual in the crowd would look and say, wow, this has got to be one of the bigger upsets in bowl history, right? The more informed fan would look and say, nah, man, even at kickoff, the line was USC minus two and a half. Well, turns out the odds makers knew what they were doing. Once again, it's why we did not include this game in the Ramen Noodle Express. I looked at it. I thought USC was very tempting too, but the model scared us away. The model knew. Texas is its blind spot, but everywhere else the model knew. This is the second 12-win season in Tulane history. They, I want you to listen to this now. They beat all three of the teams leaving the AAC for the Big 12. They beat all three of them. And that's not easy to do in any given year, but especially this year, they beat Central Florida, or Central, yeah, Central Florida, that's the game I was at. But keep in mind, they also went to Houston and won. They won at Cincinnati. So what a big turnaround, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't remind you. I will reiterate it again for those of you who had been tuned out. Willie Fritz was Georgia Tech's to lose, and they lost him. And they didn't lose him because Willie Fritz backed out. That's the head coach at Tulane, for those unfamiliar. They didn't lose him because Willie Fritz backed out. They lost him because they were not willing to wait. Willie Fritz wasn't leaving that team before the season was over. And Georgia Tech was not willing to wait. And they got Brent Key. More power in the world to Brent Key. This is not an anti-Brent Key thing, but I, I think that an opportunity was missed there. For Georgia Tech. As for USC, as for Lincoln Riley, we have some things that need to be taken care of in Los Angeles, California. We'll be out there later this week. I don't necessarily think even we have the answers, but I've got a stat here that probably more perfectly illustrates the inherent problems with a current Lincoln Riley team than anything I can say. Lincoln Riley now has six losses when holding a lead of 14 plus points since 2017. That is the worst number in all of FBS. The worst. So that's a problem that's gotta be rectified. Now, I was doing some radio in Portland this morning and they asked me, is this just always gonna be a program and always gonna be a head coach that's doomed to scoring a lot of points but still losing because they can't get their collective act together in the other two phases. I'm not going to say special teams has been a chronic problem, but defense has been a chronic problem. Let's just state it like it is for Lincoln Riley teams. Here's my counter. I don't think that Lincoln Riley is ignorant enough to not have long ago realized this. I'm just saying even if he does realize it, he did not walk into a situation that was ready made to turn that around overnight defensively. Um, even if they're making all the right moves right now in, in terms of talent acquisition and development, you are not going to see the fruits of that this year. And I'm not saying they are. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Even if Lincoln Riley is doing the right things, kind of like Mike Norvell at FSU, th they were doing the right things two years ago. It took two years for it to finally start paying off. If Lincoln Riley is doing the right things defensively right now, it'll still take a year or two to pay off. Let's just hope he's doing the right things right now. Because if he's not, you're going to see... Big-time talent and, and big-time teams wasted.
because you can't play complimentary football. Thanks for watching guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.